welcome back in this lecture we'll address a very important and interesting uh, topic the, which is the self discharge of a battery because of self discharge discharge the charge retained in the battery um in a charged battery keeps decreasing so what is self discharge so even in an open circuit condition a charged battery can get discharged the extent varies depending upon the battery chemistry for example in a lithium ion battery there is 10% decrease in capacity in the charge stored in about 5 years which is not too bad but in certain other battery chemistries for example in a nickel based batteries uh, the 10% uh, self discharge can occur just in about 24 hours this is not um this is fairly serious this is rather disadvantages because you want to be operating some of the batteries over a period of 10 to 20 years okay there are some batteries which are operated in this manner so you do want to decrease the self discharge that occur in a charged battery so there are many mechanisms uh, underlying self discharge uh, they are broadly classified uh, under few categories some things are well understood and uh, still in newer battery chemistry many things are uh, not understood electronic shorts um, in a battery is a perhaps a general term what are we trying to refer to here so typically in a battery the electrolyte should be a conductor for only ions and it should be a perfect insulator for conduction of electrons this may not happen in some cases um there can be electronic passage of uh, pathways for conduction of electrons via an electrolyte that may happen during manufacturing process there can be defect in the manufacturing process there can be me mechanical effects during operation if supposing there is gas evolution and so on there are a lot of deformation inside the cell uh, the anode and cathode might touch uh, each other via um, a narrow separator and that may give rise to a mechanical driven electronic shorts and perhaps the most well known electronic sh uh, shorts are the dendrites th that occur in lithium ion battery in general we can attribute a resistance to a shorting pathway an electronic shorting pathway and that resistance is given by uh, this quantity this is perhaps a empirically measured quantity because the mechanisms uh, are not only um, complex they are not readily predictable that's what makes this thing uh, very difficult when a battery would fail uh, via a shot is not very readily predictable so given a potential of a battery there can be a current associated with self discharge the as opposed to electronic current in the external circuit the electronic current inside the battery can be fairly hazardous because the heat generation uh, from an internal shot uh, will tend to increase the temperature inside the battery and there can be a, a positive feedback uh, between the shorting mechanism and the temperature so it may lead to something like a snowball effect um leading to dangerous fires this have been observed in lithium ion battery fires um so this is something that is very important um mechanism especially in the context of uh wide usage of lithium ion battery okay so you you really do not want to have any dendrites in a lithium ion battery there can be other mechanisms there is a shuttle mechanism so here we are primarily re referring to certain chemical reactions formed from 
um, certain um, components of a battery. For example, in some cases, it's well um, recognized. Uh, th these pathways are established. For example, in a NiCad battery or uh, nickel uh, metal hydride battery, ammonium hydroxide can be formed from polyamide separators. So the ammonium hydroxide so formed um, will react with the component of a positive electrode and give rise to this um, reaction product. As you can see, this is an, not an electrochemical reaction because there's no explicit electron transfer. This is a chemical reaction. Then uh, the nitrite that is formed from this reaction may react with other components for in the battery, for example, the negative electrode, and giving rise to regeneration of ammonium hydroxide. So the overall reaction is just a chemical reaction um, uh, indicated here. So again, this, why do we call this as a shuttle mechanism? There is a chemical component which gets shuttled uh, between one electrode and the other electrode. And these are parasitic reactions. This is not something what we want. Okay, So in this case, the shuttle is the ammonium hydroxide. And also uh, the nitrate also uh, formed in one of the component gets shuttled across. There can be other reasons. Uh, there can be an impurity uh, which is electroactive within the voltage potential of a battery. For example, the impurity might be an ion present in the electrolyte, let's say, and it takes up an electron from the electrode and uh, gets reduced. So again, this is a parasitic unwanted reaction uh, which contributes to uh, self-discharge in a battery. So all these kind of mechanisms are categorized under shuttle mechanism. We have also looked at some of the self-discharge mechanism specifically with respect to lead-acid battery. So you may refer to a uh, lecture uh, in, in the same playlist uh, under lead-acid battery and in introduction. We have addressed these pathways in that lecture. Uh, these corresponds to corrosion and parasitic reaction in a lead-acid battery. I do not want to extensively elaborate these mechanisms here um, because we have already done so. Um, so the corrosion mechanism may happen, for example, in the if you take a lead electrode of a lead-acid battery, they may get oxidized. And this is not an electrochemical reaction because if you look at the net charge here, the, the net charge is zero. The net charge again is zero on this side. So this is just a, a corrosion reaction wherein lead zero gets oxidized to lead four plus. So this is an unwanted reaction. Um, and there can be other pathways in a lead acid battery. For example, gas evolution is a common problem um, in a lead acid battery, but this has been substantially decreased, but, uh, but this is still a po possibility. For example, there can be O2 uh, gas um, from the oxidation of water, um, and then there can be H2 gas uh, that is also formed. All these things are uh, parasitic uh, mechanisms that contribute to self-discharge in a lead-acid battery. So as I mentioned, this is a self-discharge. is an important aspect of a battery, and you want to be suppressing self-discharge. So a lot of research is going into understanding what are the different pathways um, in different battery chemistry. In the next uh, lecture, we will look at uh, another important uh, topic, um, which is the capacity fit in a secondary battery. Thank you.